Hey, it's Miss Tramel here, back for day 14. Are you guys ready? I know it's Friday, but we have to push through, okay? So I need you to make the effort to stay with me. We have some interesting things to talk about today in regards to Xavier's garden. Before we do that, though, let's do our normal. Let's update our calendar grid. Here's our marker for today. I'm sure by now we can quickly figure out the equivalent modern number. So, what is it? Good, 275. I'm going to record that. 275. We good? Great. Let's update our calendar collector. Okay, so here we are, adding day 14. How many inches do we have now? While you're thinking about it, I'm gonna scroll down to our recording sheet. Right, 14 times six. So how many inches is that? Right, we could do 10 times 6, which is 60, plus 4 times 6, which is 24, or we could do 12 times 6 plus 2 times 6, or we can add 6 to what we had yesterday. So if we do that, it doesn't matter which strategy you choose, what answer would you get? Good, 84. Awesome. So, how many feet is that? Let's talk about it as a fraction first, or let's think about it as a fraction first. All right, today's day 14, so we have 14 halves. Very good. Okay, so how many whole feet do we have then? Yesterday it was six and a half. Right, we just completed a whole nother foot, so now we have seven whole feet. And 14 divided by 2 is 7. If you haven't re recognized that fractions are sort of like division, then there you go. 14 halves equals 7. Now, how about yards? We can easily do the fraction piece, right? Yeah, because we have 14 six. But how else could I write that? Right, two and two six, or we know two six is equivalent to one third. So I could have written two and a third. Very good. Now, let's talk through your solutions for Xavier's garden. You may remember the other day we started here and we um, read through the problem, we underlined the critical information, and I set forth and challenged you to find more than one answer to the problem because it did say what are some possible solutions. Those of you who stuck with me till the end, um, we kind of talked about two of the um, dimensions that were possible and then I challenged you to not even use those in your answer to think of some other ones. So let's talk about all the possible combinations or maybe I should say the possible dimensions that Xavier could have used for his garden. I'm going to open up my whiteboard again here. And so talk with me about how you thought through this problem. First of all, let me just write it here at the top. Length times width equals 48. Okay, great, so you thought about all the factors that multiply for 48, or that multiply together to give you 48. That's a good way to think about it. But did anybody use something different? That's really cool, you used the guess and check method because you weren't sure. So what did you start off with when you guessed? Started off with eight? Eight times five? 
Well, what is 8 times 5? It's 40. So when you did that, what did you realize? You needed more. And when you figure that out, then what equation did you come up with? Good. 6 times 8 equals 48. So that's one of the possible solutions. That's cool. So you might think of anything else. Oh, that's cool. You used two. Why'd you use two? Nice, because you know 48's an even number, and so it's anything that's an even number is going to be divisible by two. So when you did that, what'd you get? Two times what? Two times 24 equals 48. That's, that's nice. Are those all the possible dimensions? You're right, there are more. So, what other strategies could we use? Oh, so you thought about four. Well, how do you get four? You're right, anything that goes into two will also go into four. So, what would our equation be? Four times what? Four times 12 equals 48. Good. Are we done now? Before we move on, I want you to take a second to think about what we just discussed. What did students use to figure out some of the possible dimensions? Put it in your own words. Right, so some people use the guess and check strategy, which is really good, especially if you're not sure where to start. Right, and others use their knowledge of factors and even numbers and the multiples of two, like we did on our number line at the beginning of our number corner journey together. So let's draw out some of these and see if we can figure out what are some other possible dimensions because they're actually at least two more. So I'm going to draw it out for us. And I'm just going to choose the color blue here. So our first one is 6 times 8. Six times eight. It's forty-eight. Right? Do we see a connection between six times eight and maybe two times twenty-four? Or six times eight and maybe four times twelve? No, not yet. Okay, well let's just draw it out and then maybe we'll figure it out soon. So, here's my 2, and here's going to be my 24. It's going to be really long and skinny. 2, 24. So this was 48. This is 48. Okay, well, is there a connection between 2 times 24 and 4 times 12? Right, we doubled and halved. Do you remember we talked about that before? You double one factor and have the other, your product remains the same. So now instead of having 2, we have double that, which is 4. And instead of having a long row of 24, we're going to have that. It's going to be our 12. And our product remains the same. And I'm also going to show it to you like this. You see that if I were to cut this in half and then slide that piece over here? Now, I essentially didn't change my area at all. I just moved it around a little bit. So if these two are connected, can we use what we know or what we were just reminded about 
with doubling and halving to figure out some other possible dimensions? Yeah, maybe we can double and halve 6 times 8. Well, if we did that, what, which one would you double? Which one would you have? Right, so if I doubled 6, I get 12. And if I halved 8, I get 4. Looks like we already have that combination. So can we try doubling and halving the opposite way? Yeah, let's have 6 and double 8. Let's see what happens. Half of 6 is what? 3. And if I double 8, I'm going to have 16. So now I have 3 times 16. Whoa! That means we have another possible dimension of what his garden could be. Let me add that to our list. 3 times 16 equals, whoa, 48. And I'm going to add that here. And I'm going to fix it. So I need an equal sign. 3 times 6 is 48. And we got that by doubling 8 and having 6. Cool. Well, is that all now? Is there any more we could double and have? What happens if we try doubling and having this one? If we double 4, we get 8. And if we have 12, we get 6. And 8 times 6 is the same as 6 times 8. We just have to twist it this way. So we already did that. Well, let's try doubling 12 and having 4. 24 and 4. We already have that. We can't double and have this one because 3 is an odd number. And if we have an odd number, we're going to end up with a number with a fraction or a number that has a decimal. So we're not going to do that. What about 2 times 24? Can we double and have that? Sure we can. And that's going to give us what? 1 times 28. Or excuse me. 1 times 48, right? It's going to be really long and really skinny. you think he'd want to have a garden as super long and super skinny. And I'd probably even have to go over here to finish it. Would you want to have a long and skinny garden? Probably not. So you also may remember the last time you worked through this problem, I did ask you, I said, which one do you think he would want to use? And which one would he not want to use? Would you want to have a garden that's a 1 by 48? No. Well, which do you choose? That's cool. I like that thought. Okay, well, if you have some extra time, we do have another question that I would invite you to work through, similar to what we just did, but uh, with some different numbers. This time, it says Xavier has a friend named Isabel, and she has three times as many vegetables as Xavier. So, Xavier had 48, how many vegetables does Isabella have? Let's work through that really quickly. Forty-eight times three. Yeah. We could add forty-eight. I'm gonna put G for garden. We could add forty-eight three times. Right. What else could we do to solve that? Ooh, I like your thinking there. We could do the over strategy. 
where instead of, and actually this is really not proportionate, so let me fix that. Where instead of um, finding the exact answer first, we go over and then we figure it out. So if this was my 50, go over times 3, well, 50 times 3 is, great, it's 150. But i got to take away two groups of those three. Because instead of 50, I actually need 48. And we know 2 times 3 is 6. That would leave me with 150 minus 6, which is 144. So now that we know how many um, vegetables Isabella has, this time it's asking what are some possible dimensions for that. So if you have time, I challenge you to work through that. If not, it's okay. And if you do, make sure to talk about it with your teachers so that you can make sure you found all the possible dimensions there are, just like we did. Just remember, think about it and think through some of what we've already done in terms of guess and check, what we know about our multiples, and then the double and half strategy, which works really well. Thanks for joining me for day 14 of Number Corner. That's all for today. So have a great rest of your Friday. I'll see you guys again on Monday. Enjoy your weekend. Bye.